Merry Christmas. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas today and to tell you the Christmas story from my point of view. I have in front of you some nativity sets. Nativity actually means birth, and when we talk about the nativity, we're talking about the birth of Christ. And so when Jesus was born, we have a picture here of Jesus and Mary and Joseph and the star that appeared in the sky. There's also a nativity set here where baby Jesus is there with Mary and Joseph and there's a cross in the background because Jesus came to save his people to save us from our sins. This is one that a, that uh, a relative sent and it's a little box that I can put a candle in and on the front there is baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph and on the sides are the wise men or the magi and you can put a candle on the inside. Another one is this stained glass, um, which is Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus with the star in the background and a candle in the back. And this last one is a statue of Mary and Joseph and Mary's holding baby Jesus. My favorite nativity set though is the nativity set I made many years ago. I started with a platform, and the platform is like the ground of the cave or maybe the, the uh, stable where Jesus was born. And I made a background for it so that it would, it would stand up tall. And we don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us that Mary and Joseph, how they got from uh, Nazareth to Bethlehem. But they had to go because there was a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be counted or, and taxed so that they, um, they had to go to the place where their ancestors were from. And since they were from, uh, the king, from King David, uh, they went to Bethlehem where David was born. The Bible doesn't tell us if they went to Bethlehem on a donkey, but that was more than, uh, more than um, oh, 80 miles that they had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. So I suspect they may have written, they may have let Mary ride on a donkey. But Mary and Joseph went to, Beth, went to Bethlehem. And they first, they went to a hotel or an inn, but the, the innkeeper said, I'm sorry, there's no room in the inn for you. Um, we have so many people who've come to, who've come to um, Bethlehem to be counted, and there's no, there's no space. But you know what? There is a stable there that you can go in, and the stable has clean straw, clean hay, and you can, you can rest there and be there. Well, in the stable, there may have been even a cow. And so I'm gonna put the cow leaning over here. And there probably were sheep there because the, uh, because the sheep that were raised in Bethlehem were raised for the temple. So there could have been a, uh, a sheep that was there. But during the night, the baby Joseph, the baby Jesus was born and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and put in a manger because there was no room in the inn. There very well could have been some chicks that, that were there too. And so I'll put a little chick there next to, ba next to baby Jesus so that you can see him and even a mother hen could have been there, so I'll put her there too. Well, while the, when baby Jesus was born, something wonderful happened. An angel appeared to shepherds in the sky, and the angel of the Lord said, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. A Savior has been born to you. And you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes or pieces of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. That means there were lots and lots and lots of angels. They were so excited because they knew the Savior had been born. And so the angel then, I'm going to put the angel over here by baby Jesus. And the shepherds looked at one another and they said, oh my goodness, 
I think we should go over there and see this great thing that the angel told us about. So they made their way from their field where they were watching sheep. And I suspect that they may even have brought a, a lamb with a sheep with them to give as a gift for baby Jesus. So maybe they did. So it was a wonderful thing. But you know what special thing happened on that night that Jesus was born? A huge star appeared in the sky. And it went to rest right over the place where Jesus lay. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Don't you love the Christmas story? Well, after that, it says that, and I'm going to read this right from the Bible. In the book of Luke, it says, um, When they had seen Jesus, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary, Jesus' mother, treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, which um, were just as they had been told. So that's the Christmas story, but you know what? You don't see any wise men, do you? And you don't see any, um, any camels or anything like that. Well, we celebrate in the church, we celebrate the coming of the Magi or the wise men on uh, the celebration called Epiphany. And the wise men came uh, because they had seen the star that appeared in the sky and they knew that something very special had happened. Well, by the time they came to Bethlehem on their camels, um, the angel was gone. Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were now living in a house, and the shepherds were gone. And so the, uh, the, the wise men didn't see the star anymore, so they decided they'd go to Jerusalem, which was about five miles away from Bethlehem, and that they would go there and they would um, ask the king, where is this new king that has been born? Well, the king Herod was really troubled by that. And he said, what do you mean a new king? So he consulted with the Jews and he asked them, where is this king to be born? And they said, well, according to scripture, it was born, he was to be born in Bethlehem. So uh, the king told, the king Herod told the wise men, you need to go to Bethlehem, and after you've seen the child, come and tell me where he is, so I might worship him too. But King Herod did not want to worship baby Jesus. He didn't. He was jealous of the fact that there was a new king coming on the scene. But anyway, the shepherds, not the shepherds, I'm sorry, the wise men went to Bethlehem, and they went, and actually they found he was no longer in the stable. They were in a house, and baby Jesus could very well have been up to two years old at that time. But anyway, I'll leave the scene as it is. So the camels came with, their sh with, the, um, with the wise men, and we, it doesn't say how many wise men there were, but we suspect there were three because there were three gifts that they brought to Jesus. So there's Mary and Joseph and Jesus. There's two of the wise men, and here's the third one. And they had their camels. That's an awful lot to put on the scene, isn't it? One camel sitting down, and the other camel is standing up. And they brought gifts to the baby Jesus. They brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. Myrrh was a costly perfume. And they brought these things to baby Jesus. And they went then to their, to their places they were staying after that. And an angel appeared to them in a dream and said, No, no, don't go tell Herod. You go um, back a different way. So they went to their homes a different way. Well, the, the word, um, when we celebrate this, it's the season of epiphany. Epiphany means to show forth. And because the 
the wise men were from different countries, Epiphany is a time when baby Jesus was revealed to the whole world because he didn't come just to save the Jews. He came to save um, everyone because it says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world, not just a particular people, but he loved the whole world, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that's what we want for each of you, that you will believe that Jesus has come to save the world from their sins. So on this Christmas and at, in the celebration of Epiphany, I hope that you'll think about baby Jesus and all that he came to do.